thank you, Sayyidi, for teaching us. Um, is our higher conscious in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Don't understand the question. That for us, our understanding is that the immensity of the light in which Allah has given is held within the Divinely Presence. The understanding of consciousness and soul, these are sort of western words words for people to understand something they may not understand. So consciousness slash soul because the soul is conscious, it is the illuminated being of our reality. Actually the physical body is like the clay and the dummy, it doesn't know anything, it has nothing of an ability, it doesn't know anything can't feel anything up. It's the real, the reality of us is the soul. As soon as the soul comes in with its energy, it illuminates all the senses, it illuminates the eyes, the breath, the ears, the mouth, the tongue, everything. Because as soon as the soul leaves, again it's just a dead piece of flesh. And no, most people are scared of the dead when they see them. So it's even a frightening being. What illuminates it and make it to be beatific is the soul. When the soul comes in, it comes with all its power, its lights, its abilities and begins to operate the vehicle of our physical body. But that light that God has given to us is very small because it's a small trust until the servant can open the greater trust within the Divinely Presence. So the Prophets their trust opens for them faster so that their risalat and their prophecy is immediately operating from that reality. So that is of a different reality than the reality of the Sahabi of what Allah has opened for their souls to be upon the earth, what Ahlul Bayt has uh, opened upon their souls of realities and their uloom and their knowledges. That's why there are people in life whom are seeking Allah and there are murad whom Allah has, has predestined and sought their reality, has given their reality from an ancient time and as a result places them on this earth for the immensity of blessings that Allah has already written upon their souls. The knowledge that would be fragranting the earth was already written upon their souls. Everything that the earth would benefit and its inhabitants would benefit because this earth is the, is the location for the arrival of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result Allah beautified and put every blessing upon it. So these souls that have been destined to come upon earth, they came with all their haqqaiqs and all their realities and all their lights to illuminate the earth, to bring knowledges, to bring grace and Divine blessings to take away many difficulties. So alhamdulillah these are uh, ancient realities and the realities of the souls inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi when writing the haqqaiq should we write every word the shaykh says or do we write the major points or summaries? Yeah you try to write as much as you can and and try to keep it in the words of the shaykh and not putting your words into it because then that's where the confusions can happen later where you try to then describe it or read it to somebody and that's not what he's said. We have that in the transcribing, people start to transcribe and they're just new to the concept of transcribing and they just say, oh I'll make it an easier sentence. And they'll change the words and every word has a different understanding, it can take the sentence in a completely different direction. So and the flavor of how the shaykh talks with whatever broken talk, broken English, you get a sense of how he's talking by exactly writing that style of what he said. Then you can hear it later in your head that, oh this is how he talks, this is what he was saying. Even the, if he's using the incorrect word that's still that the flavor of how he talks you pick it. So like with the shaykhs that had uh, 
a different accent. If you read the writings you immediately knew that was Mawlana Shaykh's accent, this is how he talked, this is how he punctuated, that's how he had his expression. So when you would read those you would actually hear Mawlana Shaykh in your hear, in your consciousness. But when someone edits it and tries to make like a professional edited document you didn't hear anything. It changed completely the energy of the shaykh and so you're trying to one establish as much as you can towards the authenticity of authenticating what the shaykh has said and then to the best of your ability of how much you can write. So a lot of times people may write as the, the talks are taking place and then you pick up as much as you can of that reality inshaAllah. Or later they watch it on a video at a slower speed and write it because they can change the, the speed of the video and how fast they want the video to go and they slow it down and then they can take the notes that they want. But either way alhamdulillah it's all good as long as you get in the habit of writing so that Allah the qalam can open up the heart because the pen has an immense reality into the opening of the heart inshaAllah. Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum Salaam uh, wa You've spoken before about the tattoos on the body as an analogy of our barzakh reality. Is it the same when these animals are on the clothes we wear or the toys our kids have? No, no, this is, uh, this is a sign of the time so it doesn't necessarily mean if, if you picked up a shirt with something that that means your bar barzakh reality because then you're taking everything to become extreme. And then we, we are a middle people and because of where we live and the difficulties that are all around us Allah knows best where He's placed us. So alhamdulillah you, you do the best that you can and you, you live with your surrounding. But this is a about the reality of why are people marking themselves and what type of inspiration are they getting to put upon themselves. Because when the reality of the grave is so close it reflects to the inhabitants on earth. If your reality is a luminous and good and blessed you find yourself being called towards the light. Now that's why many people logging in and say, I don't know why but I'm, I'm just listening now. It's a calling from your soul that as these dimensions are becoming closer those whom they've been granted that light in their grave and it's already been written for them, that light is calling them out and reflecting upon them. And as a result they fulfill the will of God that already been predestined and written. And those whom their grave is in of a not good condition then these reflections are coming out, these creatures are moving and that's why when Prophet described these creatures that he saw upon people, he saw the scorpions in their bellies and the, the spiders and the snakes all upon them and saw that they were being punished by the immensity of these creatures all around them. And then you turn around and you look on earth and there's people with the snakes all over their body tattoo and scorpions all over their stomachs and arms and feet and snakes and spiders. And this is uh, not the, they think beautification but this is a consciousness that reflecting to them that shaitan is, is putting upon them to copy their reality. And we pray that Allah can change anything and illuminate anyone whom Allah want and call towards the way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that is then the importance of da'wah. As a result of what we're seeing, we can't sit back and just let everything burn. That the fruit of our life, the reality of our existence, the blessings and the nearness to Sayyidina Muhammad is going to be based on the strength of your dua. Because if we understood that Prophet loves all creation, they're all under his light and there have those whom receive the message and those whom have not yet received the message. Those whom receive the message alhamdulillah and those whom have not yet received the message it's our responsibility to deliver the message. But we need of ambassadors with good character, love and lo loving teachings that they teach patience 
to, they teach all the good way and the loving way inshaAllah. By virtue of doing those types of teachings, supporting that style of teaching, supporting that type of way, we gain a nearness to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not that your looks, it's not that your house, it's not that you, you do this or you do that. What does that matter for Sayyidina Muhammad But if your life is about the da'wah that I have to reach to people, I have to teach them the good word, I have to be an example so that one day I can teach to be of something of the good word and a good example, that's dear to Prophet because then we understand how much he loves this creation. Because Allah loves the creation and that love is reflected to Prophet that raise yourself, raise yourself up into manhood, be an ambassador of good character and nothing is more pleasing to Prophet than somebody with good character reaching out to people, giving a good word and by that word maybe they come towards that reality and Allah guide them inshaAllah. But that for us is to draw near to Sayyidina Muhammad That's why da'wah is most important, the da'wah efforts, the books, the show, the TV, the video, all of that. If, if, if it was of no importance no one would be doing it, everybody would just sit with what they have of knowledges and proximity they achieved and they would have sat and did nothing. But because the da'wah is so important and that, that brings such a closeness to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why in Qasida Buddha describes some are coming to take the cups and the fountain from the heart of Prophet Some come in spoons, cups and some come and take in oceans of, of lights and, and realities from the heart of Prophet who, who, come, who comes with a spoon? The person not doing anything, you come, you, there's enough for you, it's only for you, you take it and go. Who's then taking the ocean? Who's coming and taking oceans of reality from that heart of Prophet is they give the ocean to the one whom's going to disperse it out to the ocean of creation. The, the, the one who's not doing any da'wah, yeah, you can imagine they're probably getting less than a cup from that reality because they're not doing anything with it. Otherwise you're accountable for what you do, you get and achieve of realities. So with that reality, with that ocean, with that power, with that light, the promise is go out and reach to people. What money you got, spend it upon da'wah, spend it upon sending it out, spend it upon putting it out to people to hear the good word and to, to feel the love of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So many people around the world they talk about how they're the leader of tariqah, they don't even have a website. You don't have even an email, not even a phone number, what, 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 what is that? It doesn't make any sense, even they, they let their websites expire because they didn't want to spend $70 on a website. What about an organization spends thousands of dollars, just Adam's bill alone is thousands of dollars on YouTube analyst, <laughs> hosting specialists, <laughs> just all of these cameras, uh, production specialists, every type of things, Upwork, uh, video, apps, everything. Where does that come? Well because there was a, a burned in concern within the soul and the reality of that person that, Ya Rabbi if what you give to us we're going to spread the word, we're going to make from left to right and front and back to hear it, to propagate it, to receive it, to get it and we don't care who likes it and don't like it as long as Sayyidina Muhammad is happy with us. And at that time if he says it's enough then da'wah is finished and time to return home inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Would you say there is any reality behind sun gazing in the morning after Fajr and sunset at Maghrib? Sun gazing in the morning and well there, there's realities in the sun. I wouldn't gaze at the sun and take your eyesight away. But uh, Allah informs in Qur'an, praise me at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. So we have teachings on that. And that the animals and creatures show that, 
And the animal that has the most love for Allah like a bird, they have very small head and very large hearts and as a result they fly. So any servant who wants to fly make your head to be small and make your heart to be big. The bigger your head the smaller your heart, right? That's why they show aliens in movies as what? Huge head, it's just head and a small tiny body that you look at it is like a lizard and say, well there's not even a heart in there and there is no heart in there. So th this is a deep reality, Allah just says, I gave you both, I kind of gave you a big head as insan and a decent sized heart but don't let your head become so big. If your head becomes so big and that you think through your head you'll understand everything, that's why we said those are the people who are one. They are the one, I, when they talk, I did this, I have that, I gonna go there, I publish this. When the I is so strong they're the one, as a result of being the one they never see their Lord. They look at it like a dot and say, I don't see anything there, there is nothing there and this life is everything. There is nothing on that side, it's just a dot, nothing. When we reduce ourselves and take this way of annihilation and effacing, we become nothing. When you become nothing all you can see is the one in front of you. And the, the Divine Lordship and might and majesty of Allah is everywhere. If we make ourselves to be nothing, then nothing can come to me except through Allah no sickness can reach to me except Allah no medicine can come to me except by permission of Allah As much as we bring ourselves down you see the One everywhere. Everywhere you look you see His Oneness and His might and majesty upon everything. That's the importance of what is trying to be achieved through all of these teachings and these practices. What was the question? What was the question? <laughs> The sun gazing? Uh, sun gazing, yeah. That was the praising of the birds at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. That these are the two times that are very important for spiritual power. That at the fajr time, faraj means that the sun is now rising and this has to do with when we face the, the reality of the rising sun means that the day is opening the reality of the tajalli is opening and all illumination is opening. So we praise the Lord at the rising of the sun and that us to be safe for that day, to be blessed for that day, whatever grace and majesty you have for that day to renew that light upon our souls and has to do very much with the reality of the soul and ishraqiyoon, those whom their soul are to be those who learn and the, the men and women of God whom their souls are to achieve an immense state of light and knowledges upon this earth. Those souls are called the ishraqiyoon, that they're in continuous illumination and in every moment there's a horizon that rising upon them of knowledges. And then at the maqrib what we don't have east and west but we have the setting, the setting of the sun is that the day is now coming into a state of death and just like the death on, on uh, our life on this earth and the death of Qiyamah and Armageddon, every night there's a death and that we pray that Allah to safeguard us and to bless us, to dress us and that to keep us safe in the evening through all the mischief and, and mayhem that opens upon the earth at night and that's why Salatul Maqrib is the beginning of our day. Because our, our life is beginning in the secret of nighttime. We're, we don't begin our day in the day. We begin our existence at night because that was the secret of our birth onto this earth. That when we remember that we come from the darkness into the light, we came from a world that was non-manifest into an ocean of manifestation. You didn't just come into the world of man manifestation and you're going back to nothing. You came from somewhere upon this earth and you are returning back to that destination. And that's the secret in the birth and all the tricks that shaitan is playing upon people by being born and calling them, happy birthday, you're just born. No, they're born nine months old. They've been alive for nine months, they're not just born, 
And then you celebrate their birthday at one? No, at their birthday they're actually 12 months plus nine. You should be celebrating their 12 months plus nine months. They weren't dead when they came out, their nine months they were alive. But shaitan has people counting as if that was dead for nine months and as soon as the child is born you say, oh he's born, then on the twelfth month happy birthday. And that's why then with that understanding he can push the philosophy of abortion and killing because it's in the womb it doesn't really matter. And with that philosophy millions of children are being killed every year through abortion. So the Islam comes to show heavenly might and that's the secret of why our day begins at Maghrib. The hikmah and the wisdom that no, you're from the kingdom of the heaven. Night is symbolizes the heavenly kingdom that nobody can see on this earth. That you're born from the heavenly kingdom, sent for earthly experience and to that heavenly kingdom you have a two-way ticket. And that's why everyone must taste of death, death on this earth. And as a result then we understood that the child within the womb is alive, it's nine months old when he comes out. There is a creature, has a creation, has an existence, has a soul and a destiny that has been written upon that child. So these are many, many realities that Islam always come to dispel against what the devil and shaitans are doing with the subtlety of how they teach. People think it to be insignificant but when he puts something in such a subtle way they don't even understand the psychological impact that it has upon human life. When they don't recognize life for nine months, don't recognize, don't recognize and say have a happy birthday and on the twelfth month they say happy birthday you're one years old. He negated nine months within the womb. And if he does that, does that, does that then you think the nine months didn't count, well why don't you just kill him too? And that's the satanic understanding of why they have abortions, why they do these horrific things in this earth. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How do we protect ourselves from negative energy before going to sleep? Is there an adab of what to wear for men and women? You have to keep yourself uh, covered, to, to have uh, appropriate clothing when you're sleeping, to make sure that you make wudu before you sleep and to keep your head covered when you're sleeping so that not to come under attack to sleep. We have a whole video on the power of the sunnah and how to sleep on to the back to be protected and the sunnah sleep on your right to be protected because when you sleep on the right side your heart will guard your body. When you sleep on your back side your heart is guarding your body from satanic attack. As soon as you sleep on the stomach shaitan is attacking you and your heart is under duress because your weight and your body is on top of it and it's not able to defend through the back of the insan's body. So many of these realities that Prophet brought for insan then have a tremendous reality and to control oneself not to lose their wudu while sleeping. And if they become aware of losing their wudu immediately to get up and to have the discipline to go wash to keep their wudu. And then the Qur'an which to recite before they sleep is four falak, three Surat al-Nas, two ikhlas inshaAllah so that it equals nine. And then they read and blow upon themselves inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh If the resistance comes from the spouse to follow the tariqah, how to keep going on on our own path without creating conflict, also how to remove bad energy from children? Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh That's what we said it's a lonely path. That that becomes the challenge in, in one's life that we want you know always to spread something good, that we want everybody to come, we want it to be enjoyable, we want it to be fantastic and in reality it may not be that way and the person may only be the one whom is truly loving it, truly enjoying it and that becomes their ability to manage. 
and to be with them, to be happy with the children, to be happy with the family and then keeping their way and their practices so that to, to keep it you know uh, something for themselves. So if they were doing their zikrs everyone goes to sleep, you say goodnight and then you go and do your practices if you have the discipline to do that. Everybody's sleeping, you wake up and you go pray, you don't have to wake the whole house up say now it's tahajjud time. But you do the practices that you have to do and you accommodate them for the time they need and then you set aside a time for yourself and your practices and you try to keep that balance. And that becomes the secret of are you able to be a balanced person in life. If you take too much for that side and you oppress the family, all of the wajah is not happy with that. It's not tabligh jamma where you just leave everybody and go out into the woods. They, they tell you, come, come with us for 40 days, leave everything and, and leave. And so what are you talking about? Nobody ever did things like this. This is this oppression to, to people. The Naqshbandiya way is khalwad al-anjuman, it's people and to keep your practices and to make everybody to be happy and at the same time struggle to do your practices. If they have to go out, you go out with them. If they have to do things, you go out and do those things and then you struggle to do the things that you have to do later at night when everybody's sleeping, early in the morning when everybody's sleeping. So you try to find a balance in trying to keep everybody to be happy so that your practices are not an oppression upon other people because then Allah is not pleased with that. So that's the, the great balance and that, that's why it is the greatest jihad, it's not the easiest struggle, it's the greatest struggle to struggle against oneself and to keep other people to be happy, to be content and if they didn't sign up for the, those practices and that path then they have to be kept happy and content inshaAllah. And to find your happiness in, in your loneliness that you do by yourself and you're content and you do your salawats and praisings and you build your relationship with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sayyidi, is there any way to help people reduce sudden rage of anger? Yeah, that, these are all the practices on, on, on how Somebody is going to try to take those practices and incorporate in their life. They have to keep their wudu, they have to keep their taweez, they have to keep their salawats, they have to try to listen to these teachings. Every characteristic has to be controlled and fought, that is the great fight. If you know that you have a sudden burst that you can't control then you have to control the elements. That you wrap something on your hand to remind you that you're going to fight your anger. And if anger is coming quickly from your mouth you put the lollipop in your mouth at all times. Especially around special triggers of people who you know you're going to argue with, you put the lollipop into your mouth. You put a, a post-it note in your house on your mirror that, I'm not going to rage, I'm not going to get angry, shame on me for being angry. And then you mark yourself because this is a real battle, how would you go to battle with anything else? People think it's just you know philosophy, no, no this is a real battle that shaitan is, is making you to lose your way because of your characteristics. So how are you now planning on fighting? Shaitan, Allah is watching and if the person is sincere and putting their armament and their planning, I'm going to put a post-it note for this, I'm going to wrap something on my hand to control the feeling, I'm going to always keep myself in wudu, I'm going to keep that lollipop in my mouth when I go visit these certain people because I know they always get me upset. So all of these things are tools in which Allah watches, وَإِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ And then Allah begin to send support and support upon the servant whom trying to help themselves from bad characteristics and, and bad deeds inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen in the sharaf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam 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 alayhi wa s